Um, everybody, welcome the Crushers, the defending champions of Live Golf 2023. We are joined here by Paul Casey, Bondito. Bondito. That's me. <laughs> Bryson DeChambeau, our captain and our returning champ at Live Golf Mayakoba, Charles Hell III. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, so I want to start off just by talking about your awesome season finish last year. Obviously, the Crushers had an amazing year. You guys were team champs. What have you guys been doing in the off season to kind of mo maintain that momentum going into this year? I'll start with you, Paul. Um, I, 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 exactly. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was thinking, what was I doing? The, then you said to retain the momentum. The problem is you can't retain the momentum. That's the difficult thing. It's, you know, we're starting at scratch, so we feel like we've um, we got to do it all again, and we're willing to do it all again, and we're ready. Um, what have we been doing? I've been, first and foremost, the first time maybe in my career I've ever had an off-season which has been the most amazing thing. So being a dad and, a, and a, a parent and a husband first, but you know, an opportunity to reset the body and work out and work on the golf swing. I mean, phenomenal. So I, I come in here extremely rusty, um, not necessarily on top of my game, but very excited for the season ahead and looking forward to trying to add another championship and individual victories as well, which I've I got to catch up on these guys. And Vaughn? Uh, it was a good off season. Like Paul said, we had a bunch of time um, yeah, I did some stuff to sort my body out. I had some health issues that I wanted to deal with last year. Uh, got some great time off with the family. Um, recently launched my foundation in India. That's something that I wanted to do. So it's been exciting. It's been filled with uh, a lot of good stuff. And yeah, I've been also working on my game. So like Paul said, you know, you have to start all over again. Very happy about 23, but that was 23. This is 24. And you just, uh, everybody restarts on on friday everything goes back to scratch so uh more motivated because you got to start all over again so it's it's fun it's fun very sad well uh i did a lot of youtube content yep so uh <laughs> tried to produce some content on there and i practiced my game like i usually would built a couple clubs up created a new iron set <laughs> um built a new driver got three would come in tomorrow um did I rest? No, but it was a great off season. Uh, <laughs> and how is you, how are you as captain going to maintain the momentum from oh, last yeah. year? I, I mean, look, I've got a great team of guys that I trust and uh, rely on. Um, I don't worry about what they do because individually they do what they do best to make them play uh, for the team the best way they possibly can. So it's never going to be – I'm never going to lead them in a way where, hey, you got to do this. No, no, no. They're, they're older and wiser than me. I, I let them do their thing. <laughs> And they play golf uh, incredibly well the way they play golf. So just continue to have some team chemistry, um, having team dinners, uh, getting together, making sure everybody's uh, as happy as they can be. Nobody, nothing's perfect, but uh, we're all growing together and making sure that that uh, positive sentiment for the team and for the league in general is uh, moving forward in a great direction for everybody. So that's, that's my goals. For the, that was my goals for the offseason, in a sense, and uh, for this season coming forward. Um, I'm just excited to showcase what we have again what we continue to have and what we, I think, will have considering where Paul is working on his game even right now. So <laughs> considering where that's going to be, where I know, wh wh who, I know, who I know he is and what I know he can do for, for golf and, and whatnot in his own game, I'm going to be excited for this year. Great. Yeah. And Charles, you are the returning champ. You were one Live Golf Mayakoba last year. This course obviously suits your game. Do you think you have a chance to go back to back this year? Oh, well. Mayakoba was a, oh, it's a great spot. It's a great way to start. A um, bit of a uh, relaxing feel and uh, vibe to it. Uh, yeah, the golf course is tough. I think for the first week out, it gets everybody's attention. You've know, you got some <laughs> mangroves and hazards and wind out there. And I think if this was, say, the fourth or fifth of it in, you'd see lower scores than you will it being the first event when guys' games are kind of you know back in and playing. And uh, I, I certainly hope so. I hope we play well. I'd love for this team to be sending back up here winning again to start the year off with a win. But, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. We had success last year, so hopefully we can this year. So, obviously, we announced some new teams and some new signings over the last couple days. We have an expansion team, Legion 13. We know that Smash made some trades. They've got a really strong team. Who do you guys think is the team to beat this year since you are the defending champs? Uh if I'm if I'm being straightforward, I think it's us. If if uh, we can just get out of our own way and continue to play like we have, we're tough to beat. Um, I was I would say the the next 
team to beat would either be Smash or uh, Legion as of right now. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. You never know uh, what's to come, and the golf courses present different challenges for different teams, and uh, I think we got a pretty good chance this week. And Paul? No, I, I, don't, I, don't, like, I don't like the question because <laughs> – <laughs> last time we've got history, last time we picked a team, or well, Bryson picked a team was the yeah. Stingers, and we got dusted by them in Doral. That's so, right. Um, <laughs> I, res I respect them all. They're all, you can rank them differently, and they all have their, their different strengths. Um, but I think us, I mean, genuinely, if we play good golf, we're, we're still the team to beat. I love it. And do you guys have any rivalries? It's, it's coming. It's coming? Okay. I mean, It'll just organically happen out there. Well, you already know. Happening you, already know the, the, you already know the stuff that's happened in the past, but <laughs> you know who. So I'm sure that that'll be. If we're going head to head, it's going to create some drama for sure. I, I think the thing we'd like to actually see, and we can't control it, and yes, we don't want to necessarily be in it, but we'd love to see a team playoff this year. Yes, hundred percent. And Same. hopefully that in kind of yeah. Some. Can you guys make that happen? Yeah. Yeah. No, we just want to win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Bon, you were knocking on the door last year so many mm. times for your individual victory. Do you think that's going to happen for you this year? Are you ready to take on that challenge? No, I'm. I'm I was ready last year. I'm. I'm even more ready now. Ready to win. Um, no, I, I put some work in in the off season on um, some of my processes, some of my, uh, you know, not necessarily technique. I think Sunday afternoon is not about technique. It's about getting the job done. Um, and it was nice. It was fantastic for me to get in that position over and over again. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, I made some mistakes. I was able to correct some of them before the year was out. I uh, was very happy with how I played in Miami on Sunday. Um, that was kind of, you know, me proving to myself that I can get it done on Sunday. But even the last few weeks, I've been working on some stuff uh, mentally and, you know, more to do with, uh, like, getting the job done. So, yeah, I mean, my goal at the beginning of the year is obviously, um, like Paul said, to catch up with these guys to the left of us. Uh, but more than anything else, it's uh, getting into those same positions on Sunday afternoons because uh, you don't win tournaments on Fridays. Uh, you have to get there, you know, 4 or 5 p.m. on a Sunday and have a realistic chance and then, you know, let it happen. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm ready. Good. We're rooting for you. Thank you. Grace, and last one for me. Obviously, last year was a breakout year for you on Liv. Um, you had an incredible season. Do you feel going into this season that your game's at that same level? Yeah, I mean, from an equipment perspective, it's allowed me to play at the level that I'm at from last year. What, Bethy? Don't worry, Kiko. Bandito? <laughs> Want to go into timeout or? Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. I mean, if you asked him this question a year ago and how he was feeling in Mexico, yeah, when he was standing on every tee and he just saw mangroves, yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's a big difference in yeah. 12 months where he's at right now. It, it was fireworks last year for me and. Now it's a little bit more accuracy. I don't necessarily have the speed that I would say I had last year, which is not a bad thing. Uh, as the time goes on during the season, I will get a little bit faster. And uh, for me, my focus is just continue to play the way I did last year. I feel like I've got equipment that can suit me well um, and continue to tinker on that equipment to make it even better. Because, yes, do I want to win live events? Do I want to win every single time I go out? Do I want to win for our team and have our team win every week? For sure. But, you know, the majors are also pretty important to me as well. And uh, I want to be ready for those because I really haven't had um, all the equipment that I think I needed to play the best I possibly can. And, and we'll see. You never know what happens. Uh, things change all the time. And But, uh, yeah, currently, as of right now, I feel really good. And I think we can keep keep moving. All right. Team and players to beat. We'll be looking out for you guys this season. I'm going to hand it over to Mike. Just kind of building on one of Jane's questions about the other teams. Obviously, you guys didn't make a roster move. Only three teams didn't. Uh, during the off season, I was wondering what was, what were your thinking as you were seeing the other teams make the moves, trades, adding players, whatnot. Uh, Bryson, start with you. Kind of what was going through your mind as you saw the other teams making moves? Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of the team stuff is about chemistry and how well players work with within the team. And in regards to us, I think we do very well as a team. We're all unique in our own ways. You you wouldn't think that we would be four guys up here on a team, come from different corners of the uh, the world and uh, have different personalities and different ways of going about things but we just seem to mesh pretty well and we let, let ourselves do our own things and I think that's why uh, we've de developed a pretty decent friendship and uh, become a really nice team out here um, so yeah I think it's just the chemistry is going to stay the same and when I saw other teams it was uh, is different I don't know how that's going to be I, I don't know this is the, that's the first year where things kind of really traded and, and, and changed so we'll see. Bond did anything uh kind of 
catch your mind in terms of all the changes? Uh, you know, I've, I've learned something over the last 18 months of chaos is the less you try and find out, the better you are, the less you pay attention to what's going on, the better you are. So I think as a team that just won the team championship last year, I mean, you don't fix something that isn't broken. We guys function really, really well together. I think, like, like Bryson said, we're all very different from each other, but we have a lot of respect for each other and, and not just for each other, for each other's games and how we go about doing it. Um, and we do care about playing as a team. I think that's the most important thing. You could have four phenomenal players, but if you know that feeling isn't there, then the team doesn't really function as one. We do. Um, and I think Bryson knows that. He recognizes that. That's why you know that's why we we stick together. Paul, when the, when did you stop celebrating the 2023 trophy and start focusing on 24? Um, I mean, this game it's it's you don't get a lot if you live in the past. I mean, that's pretty true. Just playing around a golf. So to be honest, it doesn't. It never has and probably never will last very long, any victory. Um, that never takes away from those victories, whatever they are. Um, there's something very cool about this. I mean, we, we got together in Miami. We're still kind of giggling together, and you sort of, you know, you have those memories. I think that's the most important thing is you have those memories, and those memories will never be taken away. But you quickly move on to kind of what's the next challenge, what's the next goal. Mm -hmm. So um, there's no really no dwelling on it. Like I said, I mean, the fact that we're 23 champions – for, certainly for everybody else, it means absolutely nothing because they're going to be gunning for this year. So um, back to business. Charles, same question. Yeah, I think, you know, this game is so hard. It, it's hard to really, really dwell much in the past. I mean, I think we all get along really well. I think we all uh, know what makes each other tick and uh, how to prepare and how to get the most out of it. Um, Bryce is great on that, on letting guys do what they need to do to prepare. And I think that's... Uh, Actually, I think it's a, a show of strength from a captain to do that, not trying to over-control and micromanage everything. And um, I mean, obviously, last year we completed our goal, right, win the team championship. But and that kind of feels like a lifetime ago, to be honest. Like, Tonight, you know, what I mean, we haven't had a celebratory dinner. Yeah, I, I throw that one out there, yeah, so we've got witnesses. Yeah. So, just, so I think you should be on the hook for that. Yeah. I remember, <laughs> like Paul was rushing oh. to the airport that night, but <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. So yeah, listen, it's. See, they're throwing me under the bus already. We got rings. We got rings. I'm sorry. One last question for me. Bryson, obviously, there's a lot of fascination with what's in your bag. You obviously referenced it earlier. Can you kind of go through the various changes? Nah, not yet. <laughs> you don't want to ask him that. No, too in depth. We'll be, we'll be <laughs> here till the morning. There's, no, there's literally no need. Uh, it, it'll. It'll get out soon enough. It's technical. And if there's no need for anybody else to, to really Can I know, Can I give so. them a spoiler? There's Bulls. bulge and roll. <laughs> bulge and roll. So wait, it's not, there's no roll. Huh? <laughs> bulge. A lot of bulge. Bulge, okay. <laughs> a lot of bulge. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, got, I got two. Um, first is for Paul. Um, what do you make of Hatton joining Liv? How, what's he going to add? Uh, you, you 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 might know him better than 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 the rest. He's been my he's been a Ryder Cup partner of mine. Yeah, um, what is he going to add? I mean, some fire. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's a brilliant golfer. He has been for the longest time um, since he he popped up on the scene in Europe, and then we've seen his victories um, around the world. Um, one of the best putters I've ever seen. Best green readers. Um, just has an ability to uh, to get things done, and so you know you start to look at. I mean, Johnny and Johnny and I, we, we got some good work in today and we went through it and we're like, <clears throat> it's not getting any easier out here. Mm. The additions of John, I'm just picking on two, but my Ryder Cup sort of teammates, John Rahm and, and Tyrrell Hatton, and you go through the list of how many major champions are out here. The strength of field is off the charts. And so to add a Tyrrell to that mix, it's like, you got to play some, I got to play some, my focus this year is to, is to, get a victory, an individual victory. Sorry, no offense, that, that will help the team, just so you know, Bryson. But oh, no. it's like, that's it's, a tall, it's a tall task now. Do, um, do we want to have the mics on when he's? No, you might want a five second delay. <laughs> it might be good for CW, I don't know. <laughs> but he's, 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 yeah, I mean, we, the only match we played together, we 
Uh, no, how many matches we played together? A couple in Paris. But um, I love him. He's a great character. He's great off the golf course as well. He's a wonderful addition. And then for, for Bryson, I, I'm sure you're aware of the news that came out this morning with the tour and SSG. You've pretty recently been fairly confident that a deal is going to get done that includes the PIF. I'm just curious if that changes in any that changes your mind in any way, or do you think it enhances it? Like, what what's your feeling on where we are right now and how close that might be? Look, I, I don't know exactly how uh, it's all going to shake out when it's all said and done. I uh, don't know what it really means for um, the PIF's position in it. What I what I can say is that any investment into the game of golf is is gigantic, especially on their side. And um, you know, you see what we're doing in communities on our side and continuing to grow uh, with the expansion of uh, the new team and uh, addition of new players, new talent out here that's uh, that are incre they're incredible players. You're just going to see both entities continue to grow, and I hope at some some point we'll come back together. It needs to happen. Um, <laughs> I hope people can just put down their weapons and come to the table and figure it out because that's what's good for the game of golf and for fans in general. Uh, but any again, like I said, any addition, uh, additional capital going into the game of golf is always positive. Always said that. So it, it may not be exactly what we all think it should be. But um, as time goes on, I think things will settle down in a positive way for both. Are, are you afraid that it that this pushes that timeline back a little bit more? Or or do you see that, that it has to happen sooner than that? I have no... Bob, I've, I have no idea um, what it looks like moving forward. If it's going to push it back or if it even speeds it up. We, we don't know. Yeah. The top exits exit over at the PGA Tour and um, what the PIF is doing and what the top exits at Live are doing, we're, we're all functioning independently for the most part. And I think we're just going to continue down our, our own roads. And how it all integrates and comes together is something to be seen with uh, the PIF and their negotiations with the Tour and, and vice versa with SSG and, and vice versa. So my, I know that's nothing. What I'm giving you is pretty much nothing, but that is exactly what all I know, <laughs> which is nothing. <laughs> Well, yeah, it beast changes the scans a lot. I think they should be able to come back without penalty. I, I don't know what come back means, but like, I don't know what, how you feel about on that sort of out of point. I appreciate the sentiment that he is uh, providing out to the public now. I think his words are from a much more neutral position uh, as the likes of us over here at Live have been since day one. Um, I think that it, it's positive what he's saying now, and I, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, guys, uh, Bob just stole my Rory question, so I'll move on from that. Uh, but going back to even when he was talking about maybe coming back to the Ryder Cup, what was your reaction to that, thinking that you guys might get another chance to play in that event? Because it truly is incredibly unique, and it's an opportunity that not many players get the chance to have. The, the Ryder Cup is more than just being a part of the PGA Tour live. I think it's above and beyond that. And I think we need to have the best players playing in that field to continue to have that competitive spirit in that environment. I think, I think it's what needs to happen. Um, so that's kind of my perspective on that. And I, and I think it's, it's great that he's talking in, the, in, the, in that line. And then, Paul, you mentioned earlier, you mentioned, you know, when you guys are giggling together talking about last year, what do you, when you think back to the weekend, Doral last year, when he won the championship, when you guys were talking about it, what do you remember? What do you guys take away from that week? I've I'm got, curious I've what you all have to say. I've got two thoughts on that. One, that was one of the most pressure round Phil's pressure filled rounds of golf I've played maybe ever um, reason being I was struggling but I've got to look after I'm trying to contribute to these amazing guys as well I've got responsibility yeah. which you don't often have quite often like say talk, we mentioned Ryder Cup that's match play it's different you know it's uh, making a making an ace at Ryder Cup doesn't quite have the consequences it does when playing it um, in a live event and then the second thought and memory I have, and I'll never forget this, is walking up to my final hole, which was the second, and I see Bryson on the front of the second green, 140 yards <laughs> in the wrong direction. 120, yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> over the back of the 16th green, which is just, and you made birdie. I did. It was a nice 15 footer. Such an idiot, isn't he? <laughs> like, uh, bulge and roll isn't going to fix that, buddy, by the no, way. No, that was a pull. I <laughs> pulled that one. That was my fault. Um, and that's what it's all about. I mean, I genuinely, like, Barn and Chucky played, actually all three of you played amazing golf, um, but it was it was some of the most tense golf I've ever played, and that's um, that will always stay with me. I remember walking past him as he hits his chip shot short, seven feet short, and he's got that for par, and he's not really finishing off the way he knows he can finish off, and 
and I can just feel the tension off of him, like there's steam coming off of his head. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm walking past him going, I got this 120 yard shot over the second green, over the grandstands, and he's pissed off already. So the, not pissed the vibes off, I'm just trying not to let you guys down. Yeah, yeah well, that's the point, like just <laughs> wanting to, to do well. And I think just the vibes were so tense in that moment that it's tough to recreate that in other scenarios. And I think having that opportunity with the Ryder Cup is going to be special again if that ever does get worked out. Um, <clears throat> I mean, uh, all of it. Uh, I think the memories were more from um, Miami 22 because it was a really tough Saturday to swallow. Um, all four of us, we were just like, what just happened? Like, this is not going to script. We're playing better than this. And, you know, you can't control a lot of results. And I think uh, Miami 23 was in a large part thanks to Miami 22. I think the four of us were so upset, pissed off, motivated, however you want to word it, that I still remember uh, uh, one week before Miami, I had just played Chicago, played really well, flown all the way across the world to play the Asian Games in China, and my body was toast. And I got to Jeddah, and I still remember Paul saying, Ban, it's okay, get through this week, next week's more important, just make sure we're all ready for that. So even the entire sentiment leading into Miami was once we get there, we are getting it done. There's no two ways about it and that's why the Sunday was it was special because you know you just stepped up to the plate whether you had your game or or you didn't you just got it done and you know Bryson showcased that coming down the stretch Paul did the same hole that Bryson mentioned he made a seven footer Thomas Peters missed a ten footer that's a two shot difference yep. completely different scenario on 18 because Bubba almost drained his so you know every single shot mattered every person in every group mattered and and you know, to come together as a team and just get it done was was special. So the whole thing was was is just a memory. All of it leading into it and the whole week itself. Oh, my memory is the rounds of golf these two guys played. What on what Bond and Bryson shot that day. That golf course is hard, and the whole season really came down to 18 holes. And the tournaments we'd won, the high finishes didn't really matter all of a sudden until that one day. And man, the rounds of golf those two guys played. It's uh, that's my memory. I mean, it was incredible. We've seen Liv take steps forward each and every year as it enters year three here, uh, year two of the Liv League. I'm curious, what would you guys want to see changed or improved going forward this year and into next year for 24 and 25? Um, I think there's a lot of conversation as a captain. There's a lot of conversations being had amongst the captains and am amongst Liv executives of what to improve and how to improve it. Uh, things don't always move as quickly as they should, but considering 22 events in, starting a whole new league, acquiring all the players that we have, and also playing and impacting the communities that we have and in the unique manner that we, that we have. I don't know how else to say it, but we've done a pretty dang good job so far. And we're going to continue to improve. Um, and it's going to take time. It's year three. You know, the other organizations have been around for decades and decades and had institutionalized positions and run-throughs of those positions. And so we're just trying to find the right people uh, to fill the requ requirements and roles that we need at the top. And once that gets situated, we're going to see this organi organization explode more than what it already has. Are you sure any of those conversations are like or what some of those conversations are about? Uh, no. L not Just really. Just say no. Just say uh, no, Bryson. Uh, yeah. I think it's still. That's why we're a team. That's right. I mean, <laughs> what, what I, what, what, I, I mean, okay, you fit, all right, you've hit in the woods, just chip out sideways right now. <laughs> I'll keep going, like, just chip out. No, what I can <laughs> say is that, is that we do, we do have discussions that where we're able to make decisions a lot, a lot faster in, in this uh, new league. So in, in Live Golf, we're able to do things a little bit differently and we're able to make decisions a little bit quicker than most. And that's what I think is so special and unique about what us captains can do together. And what we're going to hear from our players and then bring up to the live execs. All right, over there. Hi, Marisol from El Economista. Um, for Charles and the Fumbo, uh, now playing for this league, what is the meaning or the importance of the world ranking in your career? Mm. For the world ranking. Um, Charles, you want to go first on that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, great. No, you go. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I think I, I think that at some point in time, the world ranking piece seems to be figured out. Um, we're some of the best players in the world that aren't getting points. I don't know how else to say it other than 
there's a system in place that isn't allowing us to, to gain points, and we're playing amongst some of the best players in the world. Um, they figured out how to create points for other tours. They need to figure out how to create points for us. I, I agree. Hey, listen, I mean, we were looking earlier at the, the field here of the players in this field, and it really is incredible. Um, it really is. I have a lot of a lot of guys you've even forgotten that like how good these fields are. So, yes, this tour deserves world ranking points. I think they'll figure it out. If not that, they'll figure out some uh, sort of system. But, uh, yes, and maybe even not even for me and my age and my generation, but for the next wave of people that come to live, they deserve world ranking points. Uh, or or some some way to get into the majors. Absolutely as well. correct. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, excuse me, uh, welcome to Mexico. It's impossible not to ask you, what do you expect to be here in Mexico and your expectations about John Ram uh, debut in Live Golf? Well, John Ram's an incredible addition. He's one of the best players in the world, uh, and if not the best player in the world at certain points in time. Um, I certainly think as we continue to grow and expand, we've went to 13 teams, we've gone to 13 teams now, we added a team. And also continue to add other players like Adrian Moronk, Terrell Hatton, Caleb Surratt. Uh, those additions are only showcasing how strong this this tour is and this league is. And John Rahm is going to be a tremendous asset to us. Um, what he's going to be able to provide to communities and the public and the entertainment aspect of it uh, will only be positive for years to come. And I think he's going to be able to uh, grow his team nicely as is. Uh, time moves on as well. It's it's a positive on all fronts, and I think you're also going to see what he does back in his communities uh, to grow those communities is, is going to be impactful for that area as well because I've, I've heard what he's wanting to do a little bit, and it's, it's awesome. It's awesome to hear. As a player, as a team, what do you expect from Mexico in this beginning? Great weather, uh, great people, awesome food, um, amazing food, and the beach. Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Kila. Hello, my name is Gerardo Riquelme from Marca Spain. This is a question for Mr. Lahiri. Uh, there are rumors that uh, India could host the final of the individual final of Lib Tour. Oh, nice. I don't know if you should have something about that. It's the first time. What's your opinion about it? Well, if it does happen, it'll be fantastic. But this is the first time hearing of it. But like I said about 10 minutes ago, I just, I, I, I don't listen or read anything about what's going on. I wait for it to happen because I've I've learned in the last two years that speculation is is only going to give you a upset stomach, you know. Just just carry on with your work and let things happen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, about having a live event in India, I, I've been trying. I've spoken to a few different people. There there were some conversations, there are some conversations, but honestly, I I I couldn't tell you if we have it when or if we're going to have it. But I do sure hope that we go and play in my home country. It would mean a lot. Uh, it would be a huge, huge, huge thing to have this field play in you know country like India. Like we've seen the effect it's had in Australia, in in Thailand. We're gonna go to Hong Kong. I'm really excited. These are the kind of countries where this kind of a field needs to go and play. It's gonna make a much bigger impact than you know than just isolating to a certain other part of the world. Uh, to Charles, Charles, uh, you've been flying to Mexico to impart some clinics. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, obviously Mexico is a country I love. I spent uh, a lot of time here. I was lucky as a kid to travel here on vacation and uh, moved uh, my foundation to Mexico. Uh, and, yeah, so I've been throughout Mexico doing some clinics and some corporate outings and events, and all the money and the charity dollars will stay uh, in Mexico. And, uh, yeah, I love it. I'm uh, learning Spanish uh, slowly. But uh, yeah, it's been great. We've been to a few places in Mexico City, been to Guadalajara, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue to do that and uh, grow it uh, bigger as we go. What's the foundation about? What do you support? So, so there are a few tenants. Obviously, we'll have a golf aspect to it as well, uh, but then also a humanitarian aspect of it with uh, childhood cancer uh, being one of those, and we're looking for a third. So uh, probably in the education forum. What do you have here? There are organizations. Um, you know, I've always loved Mexico. Uh, I've always loved coming down here. Uh, and, yeah, the, the people, the culture has been something that's been very welcoming, very open. Um, 
Yeah, I, I just love to do it. I th felt that I could make a bigger impact in Mexico uh, than elsewhere. And is, listen, it's something I've enjoyed doing. I mean, am I at that part of my career? I'm 44 now. So, uh, yeah, I am uh, have time to, to give back from what the game's given more than I ever deserved. So it's uh, we're just starting it out, and uh, it should be fun. Do you want to do the rest of my talking? Oh, no. No, <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> I'm curious about the – now I've seen all of you wearing the uniforms, uh, the picture of all the play players. Most of them are wearing the team uniforms. But I'm, I'm seeing that you, Bryson, have – Jets here, of course, that's a personal sponsor. As a team, do you look? I I can also see that your pants are not the same brand. So, as a team, do are you looking for more sponsors? No, they're, the same, they're the same brand. Yeah. No, no, yeah, but uh, but are you looking for more sponsors, brands to wear in your shirts personally or for a team? Are you looking for more of sponsors? Of course, yeah. now that you're not wearing, of course. For years, you were Puma, now you, you were the, the team. Are you looking for more sponsors on your shirts, on your caps, I don't know, no. for the season? Not at all. We no. want to keep, we just be blank, everything blank. Yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes, we're looking for as many sponsors as we can get that fit uh, and placement on the shirts and, and hats and whatnot. Um, we're at an inflection point right now, and I think shortly we'll be able to commercialize in a, in a really cool way. The merchandising, for the teams, of course, last year I remember all the caps uh, went full uh, at the at the shop. How is uh, how worth or how much? Mm -hmm. Of course, not completely, but, but how much have you, have have you seen that you have uh, sold? Yeah, how many sold, we sold for everything. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of traction. Sometimes uh, we can't we can't fill it, uh, meaning it's sold out and a few uh, stops we've been been around, but we're working to increase our merchandise department and be able to sell uh, a lot more product uh, globally as well. Um, you know, one place we're working on is, is in India, and you know, we're trying to get stuff in India. So it's just working with partners and, and people that want to grow the game globally and be a part of it uh, globally as well. In other tools, players are also stop wearing so many, some brands. We are seeing that Nike is, we don't wear now, we, we are not, yeah, I, I, I think you're asking actually a bigger question. Um, I think it's just about the game in general, and I think as the merger gets figured out, as people, as the placements of the, the league and the tour get figured out where they're going to go, we're going to be able to commercialize more effectively because people have um, you know, far-end sites for where these uh, leagues and tours are going to be. Yeah, I mean, so, like I can speak on behalf of Nike. I was with Nike for 18 years, and I still have a relationship. I still wear their, their footwear and their, and their glove. Um, they're not getting out of golf. But you know everything's, I guess, going through uh, almost like a like an audit. Uh, probably the best way of putting it. Nike can can sponsor it. That's that's a question for Nike. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm you know they're very they're very savvy and I'm sure they're they're doing their due diligence. Just like every sponsor is, we're all trying. They're all trying to figure it out. Bryson, last question I have for you. You became oh, notorious last year for your matches that you did. Do you have any matches planned this year with any other teams or live players? I did one with uh, Paige Speronic a little while ago. That was That's coming out here soon. It'll be a break 50. That'll be fun. Um, I'm planning on one with a couple big hitters out here. Okay. Um, Care to share? It, it's, it's in the works. Uh, well, we haven't filmed it yet, but okay. we're in talks of doing it. And we're do probably going to do a Phil Mickelson one part two. Okay. So they, they got one up on us. And then um, probably John Rahm and... Um, a few others this year would be a lot of fun. I think to be continued. T yeah, TBD. Yeah. <laughs> TBD and TBC. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Congratulations and Thanks. welcome back. Thanks. We'll see you out there. Thank you.